Uh, and uh, of course, I am Dr. Shakti Gupta. Uh, I am a head of department of hospital institution and medical superintendent in Island Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, I have worked uh, at different levels, right from dispensary to district hospital, medical college. Then uh, I have worked in directorate of health services. Now I am working in a premier institution, Island Institute of Medical Sciences. And uh, so I like to first. Uh, take up some important issues pertaining to medical technology and innovations. Then I'll like hand over the mic to all the experts for their comments. And uh, after that, we'll invite questions. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, uh, the theme for this uh, is uh, transforming healthcare with innovations in medical technology and diagnostics. No. There are certain uh, paradoxical issues, but uh, these are the facts, and we must accept that. I hope you'll agree that India is one of the largest exporters of generics, but rural India is still deprived of basic health care. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, everybody sitting in this uh, audience, experts from different fields, will agree to this thing. And uh, you'll also agree that patients from US and UK come to India for treatment but approximately 70% of the Indian patients have never seen a doctor. When I talk, the doctor means a qualified doctor. Now let's have an introspe uh, introspection. The irony of present day research in healthcare is that 90% of the research dollars goes to 10% of the population. And the technology is the key to providing affordable healthcare to more than 5 billion people at the bottom of the pyramid. So a large chunk of people are deprived of the technology which is available over here. And India's medical device market worth is about $2.5 billion. And the current annual growth rate for the medical device sector is more than 6%. Now this is a guiding beacon when we go for the new innovation or adopt a new technology in our healthcare settings. The basic principle is we must balance the wish list of the healthcare industry, the need list of the professionals, and the want list of the patients, the community, and the population, and the society. Now, there are some inflection points in the healthcare. The release of two Institute of Medicine reports, the first in November 1999, to R is human, building a safer healthcare system. And the second report, March 2001, that is a crossing the quality chasm, has metamorphosed the healthcare delivery. No stress is on improving the patient safety and reduce medical errors with a combination of policy, procedures, and the technology. No, there is a strong, uh, st there is a need for creating a stronger healthcare system, improving technology and innovations would not eliminate all medical errors, but researchers believe it will reduce the errors dramatically. Now is the time to share progress, challenges, and best practices to enable interoperability and link the ecosystem in the delivery of better quality care. Now there are certain issues which are, no, we keep on talking about what are going to be the hospitals for tomorrow, but I think they are the hospitals of today. Now we have IT enabled hospitals, the flexible hospital, paperless, filmless, the, we talk of patient friendly hospitals. Now the more th thrust is on daycare facilities. Now rehabilitation center and boundary less, uh, no, we don't have boundaries uh, uh, between the hospitals and between the specialties. In addition to that, we have a, uh, no, no, we are thinking about the hospitals which are eco-friendly, which are reconstructive, transplant centers, the organ centers, no, more stresses from the general hospital or specialty hospitals to the organ centers. The wellness centers, the robotics are being used in a big way, and now we are talking about the mobile hospitals. Now, the biggest issue before us is the innovation. Now, the question comes, how to manage the innovation. There are certain options before us. The first could be the flexibility and multiple approaches are required 
may be economic incentives for some people and the profession satisfaction for others. There are some people who are satisfied with the financial incentives, but there are some people who are satisfied with the professional uh, uh, satisfaction. Now, during design phase, there should be divergent thinking. I think no innovation, innovation or no advancement can be possible unless we start thinking divergently. If we start thinking in the same, then there is, no going to, there is not going to be any progress. There is a need for creativity, brainstorming, administrative flexibility, and the effective communication. I think these are the bunch, uh, these are important issues, uh, area, uh, things which are imp important for any innovation. Now, another issue which is that during implementation phase, there should be effective planning. You need to coordinate different activities, have a control, evaluation, participative decision making, and appropriate incentives. Now, another issue is the managing the technology. The technology is changing so fast, a computer which you get today, actually after six months it becomes obsolete, or any CT and MRI, by the time your tender is finalized, you get the new features. So the issue option is that we need to have an optimization of healthcare to which equipment, appliances, and technology they make a significant contribution, but they must be subjected to a critical qualitative appraisal using scientific methods. Now, challenge is to ensure that uh, whatever need is there, that need driven must be market driven. So, need driven has, it is it is it is not to be a market driven. You need to manage the growth with distribution. You have to balance the equity with the efficacy. We keep on talking about the affordability, accessibility, that cost effectiveness, and that as part of the Indian healthcare sector, which is entering the worldwide elite, the masses are not left behind. Now there is another issue of regulations which are needed for appropriate utilization of the spread of new medical device technology in India and monitoring the main factors underlying this tendency. Then we have to have a assessing effectivity in terms of its impact on the cost of providing healthcare and on inequalities in access to the healthcare because there are two, three issues which are very important that biggest challenge is that how to provide the quality services, how to manage the patients, especially in the public sector hospitals, and how to cut the cost. The planning the appropriate strategy, including the public-private partnerships towards the medical innovations and available basket for medical technology. Now, the medical technology forces microelectronics, intelligent telemetry, high-resolution diagnostic imaging, bionics, and telemedicine. The information technology forces internet use of internet, mobile computing, IT outsourcing, speech recognition, data analysis tools, healthcare data standards. And the access to the medical technology is that it should be cost effectiveness of medical technology which are well documented. And the difficulty is in bringing the fruits of innovation to the patient and the economy. Though the stakeholder alignment is critical to the broadening access, we need to take uh, into consideration the physician's requirement, the hospitals, patients, on one side, we have regulators, the public payers, the private payers, the industry, and the government. So all these issues depend, uh, affect the accessibility to the technology. Now the need of the hour is that whatever technology we are going to have, our innovations, that should be a need-based technology. The training of healthcare personnel is required, the autonomous regulatory bodies, then post-market surveillance for adverse effects, prompt reporting of adverse effects, and developing a culture of research and the innovations. So after this sensitization of different issues, I think this is a time for deliberations. Thank you so much.